On the 4th of July, 1946, a number of former female guards of a horrific concentration camp were led out to the gallows to face the punishment of their crimes that they committed during World War II. These women were known as some of the most brutal and savage female guards of the concentration camp system. As soon as the German army rampaged into new lands and territory during the Second World War, the occupation forces would move in and would bring in huge amounts of persecution and suffering onto civilians. These people would often face deportation to the concentration camps where they would face terrible hardship and horror as execution would be carried out in public every single day. But one camp which was established east of the city of Gdansk was Strutov concentration camp and the guards here were responsible for immense cruelty and slaughter but when a small amount of guards were brought to trial many of these were young women who had been brainwashed by the Nazi beliefs and they had become terrible villains and war criminals but what is the story of the ruthless execution of the female guards of Strutov concentration camp? Strutov concentration camp was to begin with the earliest camp set up outside the borders of Germany during the Second World War, and it opened its doors on the 2nd of September 1939. It was a site which would be used to terrorise the Polish population, and many politicians, religious leaders and teachers were rounded up in the area of West Prussia, and the SS had created lists of those people who were to be arrested. These people then became the first inmates of Strutov and they would be the ones who would create the camp and build the initial barrack buildings. It was a place which would be where civilians would be kept and they would be forced to work but then it became a fully fledged concentration camp with a deadly element to it. The first 150 prisoners were Poles and Jews who had been arrested following the German invasion. But then as the weeks of the Second World War progressed and thousands more people were sent to Strutov. The majority of these prisoners were Polish, but then as the war went on and the Germans took more lands, there would be people sent from all over Europe to this camp. Many were even sent from Auschwitz to work, and throughout Strutov's time in operation, around 110,000 people would pass through the barbed wire fences from many different lands. There were resistance fighters imprisoned, as well as Soviet prisoners of war, psychiatric patients and communists sent from the Soviet Union. The main camp had around 40 different sub-camps that served it, and different prisoners' populations would be held in different places, and they would be making different objects for the war effort. For example, there was a women's-only sub-camp, and these women would be forced to conduct slave labour for the German war effort. There were armament factories established and set up around Stratov and the subcamps, and one would make aircraft parts for the Fark Wolf, the iconic German aircraft. But the conditions of Stratov were terrible, and there was disease around every corner due to the poor sanitation and overcrowding. Prisoners also succumbed to starvation, and in 1942 and 1944, there were severe typhus epidemics that swept through and ill prisoners would then be selected to be sent into the small gas chamber in the camp. The SS guards and the doctors would be the ones to pick the weaker inmates to go to their deaths and many of these would also be executed in different ways. There was a firing range where Polish resistance fighters would be shot and it's believed that inside of the small gas chamber at the camp around 4,000 prisoners mostly children and women, were murdered inside before the camp would be freed. But some of the most terrifying guards who worked inside of Strutov were women. At the time of the war, around 1944, the German army was suffering following being pushed back from the Battle of Stalingrad, and because of this, many of the male guards of the concentration camp were pressed into service on the front lines. Because of this, the SS then asked women in the local areas to come and work inside of the camp, and in Gdansk there was regular advertisements offering women good pay to come and work inside of Strutov. Because of this, many women from different ways of life came to work in camps with the promise of better pay than what they had, and also some form of career advancement. 
This was not just specific to Strutov, as some women would go to work in different sites when they had been teachers, hairdressers and performed other pre-war jobs. But in Gdansk, a number of women did answer the call to go and work at Strutov. One of these women was a young woman named Jenny Wanda, Barkman. She would be just 24 years old when she was executed, and she was a brutal woman. She was involved in the selections of inmates to go to the gas chamber, and she also beat prisoners to death with her bare hands and with truncheons and weapons. She was not the only woman, as the prisoners later would testify about their barbaric treatment and how guards would rain down blows with their truncheons on the inmates, regularly resulting in prisoners being beaten to death. Around 65,000 prisoners died whilst at Strutov, and over half of the total inmates, and some were even drowned in the thick mud by the guards around the camp. Sick and injured prisoners were sent to the infirmary and would also be injected with phenol to kill them, and it was slaughter on an industrial scale. Suffering would not stop until late January 1945. The camp was evacuated due to the advancing Red Army. With this, 50,000 prisoners were forced out of the camp. 5,000 of them would be forced to walk from the camp to the Baltic coast, and when they got there, they were forced to walk in the sea, and then a German machine gun would slaughter them in the water, turning the water red. More prisoners were marched towards East Germany, but these were then cut off as the Soviets advanced, and the prisoners were then sent back to Strutov. But during these death marches, which were conducted in the freezing cold winter, prisoners had no food or water, and if they fell behind, they would be executed and shot. Thousands died, and around 25,000 during the evacuations, and when the camp was liberated in May 1945, only 100 prisoners were left. But at the end of the World War II, there would be a war crimes trial brought against those captured guards of Strutov. Of course, thousands of guards would work here, but only a few dozen were ever brought to answer to their crimes. The first of these was the first Strutov trials, and with this there was a number of female guards who were brought to a courtroom in Gdansk. The first trial saw six women being brought to trial, who were accused of being female overseers at the camp, and these were Jenny Wanda Barkman, Elizabeth Becker, Wanda Claff, Joa Paradis, Gerda Steinhoff and Erna Bellinhart. Inside of the courtroom, there was a great amount of witness testimony heard, and there was a lot of evidence shared which showed how brutal these women could be. But the female guards on trial didn't seem to be too bothered about what they had done, or the trial, and they would be laughing throughout the trial, and some, including Jenny Barkman, would flirt with the male guards, and the women at times seemed more bothered about their hair than their charges. But things would change as five women were sentenced to death. Anna Bellenhart would not, as she would, of her own volition, resign from Strutov, as she did not feel comfortable with inflicting such suffering on a large scale. Jenny Wanda Barkman, Ewa Paradis, Gerarda Steinhoff, Wanda Claff and Elizabeth Becker were all sentenced to death and would be condemned. A number of these had no other experience inside of camps and had only worked at Strutov for around a year, but they were still brutes and were known for violent beatings and killing. But the execution of the women would take place on the 4th of July 1946 on the Biskupia Gorka, a huge hill in Gdansk. There was a number of male guards also condemned, but a huge crowd of around 200,000 people had gathered to see the executions of the female guards of Strutov concentration camp. The gallows that had been constructed were massive, so everyone had a good view of the executions, and they were very imposing. The first women who were executed was Jenny Wanda Barkman, and the way she was executed was replicated for each of the other women. She was loaded onto the back of a truck, and on this vehicle were a number of officials and executioners, as well as a stall. The truck was then backed up under the gallows, and when the noose dangled down, and then the executioner read the death sentence, whilst another person, possibly a former prisoner of the camp, attached the noose around the condemned neck. When this was all checked at around 5pm, 
Jenny Barkman, who was wearing a simple dress, was executed as the truck drove off and she was left dangling from the gallows. She was facing the huge crowd and she was dangling with her body twitching and she struggled for a few minutes before she turned limp and died. She lost her shoe during the execution, but she was the first of 11 former guards executed that day. The other four women were executed in the same way, one after the other on the gallows. And interestingly, there was even a female executioner used for the execution of Wanda Claff. But for those people who were watching the executions, these women were some of the most despicable and horrific war criminals of the Second World War. These were women who had betrayed their friends and families to work for the SS inside of the concentration camps, and each of them were responsible for the slaughter and executions of many people. But Stratov was one of the worst concentration camps, and these women would go to their executions for their behaviour and actions inside of the camp. Thank you for watching and support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.